three, two, one. Hey, welcome to Heist Labs on MarketHeist.com. I'm Jeffrey Lin, and uh, we're really lucky to have Jason Gopher with us, uh, the mastermind behind SendmanTrader.com. <laughs> yeah, it's been around for a long time. A lot of people love it. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned in um, our meeting with Jason in Traders and Scripted, the data and commentary Jason provides is a must-read for um, many of Wall Street's top traders. So. If these are the advice that you're getting, uh, you should probably check out the source that they're getting it from, sendmantrader.com. So thanks, Jason, for joining us. Absolutely. So can you tell us a little, in your own words, what Sendman Trader is about and what it is to you? Uh, well, it's, it's to me the same probably as it, is, as it is to most others, and that's a collection of um, – Sometimes hard to find information that, that you, you, you can maybe get other places, but it's hard to find or it takes a long time to get, to get the information. So um, really what we do is I provide commentary on a daily basis and intraday um, sometimes, but uh, some people go to the site for that. Others go uh, for the indicators. Um, and so we, we have a collection of indicators for stocks, bonds, commodities, currencies, um, and most of it is related to sentiment, so basically how, how bullish or bearish people are on stocks or bonds or whatever. Um, so we chart those on a daily or weekly basis, whatever the frequency may be, mm -hmm. and we put it out there for, for our subscribers. Yeah, a lot of the data that you have, you said it's possible to find online, but it's almost um, you have a warehouse of all these things that are organized in easy-to-use ways that otherwise we have to use Excel or something ourselves to man manipulate, and that would be really, really difficult. So how well, do you – That's a focus is, is just making it quick, um, hopefully making things really easy to find and uh, just, just making it snappy. And, and um, you know, people need to save time. Everybody is busy. Everybody is reading a ton of stuff. They've got their own analysis to do. Yeah. Um, and so if it takes you a long time to find something on the site, uh, we're doing something wrong. A lot of uh, finance and trading sites, they have infos for uh, professionals and short-term traders, but it seems to me like sentiment is useful for, you know, investors for a long t or longer term, too, that are maybe just moving money in and out here and there because when sentiment turns, the, you're looking for the big tides to turn. Yeah. Yeah, it can go on all time frames, uh, and that's kind of the beauty of it. Uh, there are some intraday indicators that are fantastic. Uh, and there are some that are more of an intermediate term time frame. And I would say that's kind of the sweet spot for most of these sentiment measures is one to three months thereabouts. Um, and we get a good we get a good extreme maybe one to three times each year. So it's it's pretty rare where a lot of things line up. This past January was one of them. Um, we'll probably get uh, this year, I would say, probably two or three more. Mm -hmm. So for a longer term time frame, someone looking for a uh, 401k to put money to work, right. uh, it can really work pretty well to spot those opportunities where uh, the reward is, is pretty substantial compared to the risk. When you first made the site, it sounded like it was more of a tool for you, and a lot of people start things like this. It's something that they found useful themselves, and what you find useful, other people will. So how do, you, how do you use the data you collect daily to make your trading decisions? Well, I start with the big picture. Um, we have a, a Dumb Money and Smart Money Confidence Guide, and that's, that's kind of the, the thing that I really base uh, context on. So I'll look at some very basic trend measurements, things like that on, on the major indexes. Uh, and then I look at where our longer-term sentiment guides are. And that's really quick because it really doesn't change very often on a day-to-day -day basis. Right. Um, on a weekly basis or every couple of weeks, uh, it's, it's fine to check. So that's really where I start is just kind of a big-picture view. And then I work down to my, my handful of favorite indicators that are kind of my pets. They may not be the most accurate or the best, but uh, I know them intimately. And they just, yeah. uh, you know, you kind of form relationships with some of these indicators. And, and you know how they behave and you kind of anticipate um, – when they're going to make an extreme and how the market's going to react. So, um, so I just I put together my my bias or outlook based on that, starting from the big picture and, and drilling down to my favorites, um, and then and then take it from there. Okay. So, do you have um, tutorials or uh, glossaries to help people under, understand how to use all the indicators that you have on your site because you have a lot of them? 
in there all day. Probably not, not as much as I should. We've got a, a little getting started section mm -hmm. uh, that kind of gives an overview of, of how the charts look and what they mean. And then for uh, almost every indicator on there, when you pull up a chart, you can click on the headline, and that'll take you to background information on the indicator, um, where it comes from, how it's yeah. constructed, um, what the extremes mean, uh, what the extremes are in many cases, um, where to get some of the background data if you can. Uh, and we provide some historical data where we can um, so people can download it themselves and, and uh, put it in their charting program and test it and, and whatever. So um, some people like to do that as well. Others are very hands-off. They just kind of want a, want a general sense of where we are sentiment-wise, and, and that's all they use it for. Well, finally then, um, we've been talking about sentiment, but a lot of people seem to have the wrong idea about it. What is, uh, how do you, you define it or how do you tell people to use it correctly? Signal. People are always bullish or always bearish, uh, and that's not really the case. Uh, in fact, it's pretty rare when we have a confluence of one or the other. So um, I would say a big mis uh, misconception is that um, it should always be, always be telling us something. And mm -hmm. that's really not the case. Uh, you're reading too much into it if, if you're trying to do that. You know, if the AAII sentiment survey goes from 45% bearish to 65%, um, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean something. You've got to put it into context. And, and um, I mean, it, these signals are much rarer, I think, than, than people want them to be. Um, so I think, I, think that's, I think that's a big thing is uh, just really putting a lot of the stuff into context and perspective, mm -hmm. doing some testing. Um, I do a lot of testing, even though, you know, this time is always different. But, you know, the cliche is that uh, history rhymes. So right. um, I certainly find that to be a case. So I try to be as objective as possible. Um, I, I, I look at the data and then form my opinion instead of saying, well, you know, I, I think the market's going to go up. And then I go and find all this stuff that's going to support my thesis. Mm -hmm. And then I present that. That's just not the way I, I like to do things. So. Um, okay, great. Jason, thanks. I think that's all the time we have. Um, okay. Hopefully we'll have Jason on again some other time, but um, for now, you should check out Jason at his website, sentimenttrader.com. Mm -hmm.